When doing subsequent event testing for contingent liabilities, it's sometimes useful to use the decision aid. This decision aid will walk us through all the different steps. We'll observe we first engage in a procedure which will allow us to identify the uh, evidence of a subsequent event, contingent liability. We'll review journals, we'll read minutes, we'll read interim financial statements, we'll ask management questions, and we'll look at the attorney letter. After we have all this, we'll ask the very simple question, is there a material subsequent event? If the answer is no, then we're done. There's no additional effort that is required. If we did identify one, we have a number of different paths to follow. The first one we have to follow is, did the conditions exist at the balance sheet date? If we assume it did, we're gonna ask the question, is the loss probable? Notice that we have two boxes very similar, probable and possible. It's because the underlying accounting standards treat them differently. If it is probable that we're gonna have a loss, can, we, can the client reasonably estimate the loss? If they do, they need, to uh, they need to adjust the financial statements. So in order for an adjustment to be required, the condition had to exist at the balance sheet date, the loss had to be probable and reasonably estimatable. Now, if the balance sheet ex ex um, did not exist at the balance sheet date, or the loss is not probable, then the question will ask, is the loss possible? If the loss is not possible, in other words, a trivial lawsuit, um, a frivolous claim, then we're not required to, we're not gonna require management to do anything and we're not gonna do anything. Now, if the loss is possible, but we cannot, um, but not probable, and the conditions did not exist at year end, then it needs to be disclosed. This simple approach it's not easy to understand if you try and take it in all at once. You have to take it step by step, and a lot of decision aids follow this format. 